Hello, my name is Troy, and first I would like to share an, a personal experience of mine. Not too long ago, back in August, my grandmother and father were hospitalized for different reasons. My grandmother had developed a severe foodborne illness, while my father went through a sigmoid colectomy for stage 1 cancer. Even though they both had different conditions, their disease were brought on by what they ate, whether it was short-term or long-term, respectively. Though hospital food does have its rumors from media or gossip, it is possible that the food provided to patients on a daily basis does not cater to the patient's needs to make a speedy recovery, but only for maintenance or preventative measures. As a prospective dietitian, one of my roles will be to promote healthy eating habits that will satisfy the patient and provide a boost to their immune system. But as of now, the hospital food service did not promote safe dietary habits to inpatients in recovery. To support my proposition, we will discuss the contradiction between hospital policies and dietary diet advisories, the limitations of resources in the healthcare food service, and the harm of providing processed meats. For my first claim, the reinforcements of uh, poor eating habits will put patients at an increased risk for developing diseases. Encouragement and incentives are necessary to affect one's dietary habits as opposed to dictating what must be eaten or avoided. As registered nurse and dean of nursing Audrey Berman describes, habitual eating habits that patients develop over the years are often taken into consideration, including their gender, ethnicity and culture, beliefs about food, personal preferences, religious practices, lifestyle, economics, medications and therapy, health, alcohol consumption, advertising, and psychological factors. From a dietitian's perspective, he can, or she can advise a patient to follow a specific diet while adhering to the patient's demographics and personal medical history. By hosp medical, or hospital standards and as an advocate for the patient, he or she might choose not to follow the diet plan, in which case the dietitian offers a contract or an informed consent stating that the diet was explained thoroughly. Though it is the patient's right to refuse, the dietitian can still be held liable in future cases where the patient may develop a new disease. The inpatient menu may also contradict the dietitian's meal planning due to strict budgets and finance, which leads to my next link. For my second claim, the limitations of staff and funding is considerably detrimental in providing patients a nutritionally balanced meal. As nonprofit organizations, hospitals have a limited source of income to focus on providing patients with treatment. Therefore, the hospital food service is limited on the amount of funding to use for food service workers and the food they serve. For example, Lisa Pogas, the Director of Nutritional and Environmental Healthcare uh, Services, attempted to cut costs while integrating the food service into the healthcare system. As a result, her food service team would need to rely on pre-diced pre produce, prepared desserts, and frozen dinner meals to compensate for the lack of food service faculty members. Without supplies of fresh food or enough kitchen staff members, each patient would have a very limited amount of healthy foods on the menu to choose from. While the hospital food service does not possess the authenticity of a restaurant, though they aspire to be, the low-costing, ready-to-serve meals like TV dinners are affordable and easy to prepare for most patients in a hospital setting. However, these ready-to-serve meals are mostly composed of processed food items, especially processed meats, which leads into my third and last claim. For my third claim, inexpensive food items such as hot dogs and ham are harm harmful to the patients. Hospital foods are often including a mix of processed foods such as canned beans and carrots, sausage, and bacon. Generally, natural unprocessed foods provide more nutrients needed for the patients to avoid certain, to heal from injuries to illnesses. In my father's case, he was told to avoid certain foods such as red meat and while increasing his daily fiber intake. Not to mention, he was actually told to avoid sweet and spicy food, which is pretty common in Thai cuisine. Uh, however, he would typically have a beef and sashi patty with heated green beans and chopped carrots. Whereas the beans and carrots are orders on the side, the beef sausage patty is not a typical 
choice in providing a nutritionally dense play for recovering patients. Neil Bernard, a medical doctor and speaker for the Food Revolution Summit, wrote since 2007 the American Institute for Cancer Research and World Cancer Research Fund have warned us that processed meats are carcinogenic. And yet, many hospitals and career or cancer centers continue to offer processed meat on inpatient menus and in cafeterias. This is especially true among children's hospitals that serve hot dogs. In fact, 8 out of 10 of 10 uh, children's hospitals in California continue to serve processed foods like hot dogs to the populace. In conclusion, though it is not perfect science, dietetics in the hospital setting should be emphasized in order to provide full client satisfaction and to promote a healthy lifestyle. Thank you. All right, well, I think I see which a proposition is. It should be more clearly high, uh, signposted. And uh, it's got a negative term in it, uh, suggesting that uh, the food in hospitals does not speed recovery. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of you know, violating one of those criteria that we suggested you ought to put in your proposition, avoiding the negative terminology. Um, there's general information about some of the foods that are served in hospitals and criticism of choices that are being made. Uh, those criticisms, I think, are, are largely explained uh, that the foods represent uh, particular kinds of problems, uh, that they contribute to or extend the issue or fail to prevent or, or fail to provide a speedy recovery. That, I think, is the thing that's a little bit questionable. I think you've got uh, kind of you know, some pot shots that you can take that some of the foodstuffs that are being offered in hospitals, but the notion that if somebody eats the food that they're given in a hospital, that's going to slow their recovery or prevent their recovery, that I think is not quite sus substantiated with the pr with the information that you're presenting. The general, cr like that first quote that you had on the first point, it was long, elaborate, it had a whole bunch of stuff in it, and I still don't know exactly what the argument was. There's an argument about liability and the dietitian uh, in there that is not very well explained and I think that there may be grounds for a different argument on that subject but it wasn't clear to me how it fit in with your claim about their recovery. Now if hospitals are serving people foods that aggravate their uh, illnesses and for example spicy foods for your father who's you know been told to avoid the spicy foods or something like that, that's I think the kind of thing that uh, demonstrates that there is in fact some harm that that is occurring here. Um, the the cost issue uh, kind of gets discussed, and but it's not like I said. We're back to the same issue. Uh, th there are problems. There are cost issues, and you you're in essence saying that the reason that the foods in hospitals are not all that uh, healthy is because it's uh, primarily the cost that you're dealing with. You're dealing with a lot of frozen uh, meals that you mentioned. I don't know how typical that is. It may very well be common in a lot of hospitals but I have no way of assessing that. It may be only some hospitals do that. We're back to, you know, there, I think there's some information missing here. You've got the general criticism of this type of food without a demonstration that that is the widespread practice. I'm not saying it's not the widespread practice. I'm just saying that you need to prove that it's the widespread practice. And as it is, it just seems like it's, you know, it is a practice. Uh, but how significant it is, I'm not quite sure. The same thing applies, like you talk about uh, avoiding the spicy foods and you know, telling people to cut out beef, and then there's beef on the menu uh, that's uh, being offered. I, I don't know how uh, decisions are made in hospitals about what to offer folks. I, I assume that there's uh, some dietary consultation with the doctors or the nurses in the hospital. There's got to be a dietitian on uh, top of that sort of thing. But it, it seemed like exactly if you were offering something that, to people that they were allergic to or that was aggravating their illness, that would be a problem. Then I could see that liability issue that you were talking about earlier. Uh, the carcinogenic issue. Um, 
I got to be honest with you. Lots of lots of food products have carcinogenic elements to them. The idea that uh, you know a kid eating a couple of hot dogs in the hospital is going to be particularly dangerous. It's probably not the best thing, but the idea that it is some big threat, I think that that's a little bit problematic. Again, I think you've taken something that is a true statement, but you are making a claim about it that needs to be documented a lot more, or it's premature at this particular point. All right. Thank you.